Hi, I am Mr. Crocker, and today we are going to be talking about the history of the Northeast region. So we've already talked about the geography in lesson one. In lesson two, we talked about the resources that come from that area. And now we're going to be going through the history of that all, all the way through the beginning of our nation. So when, when we first came to the United States, uh, from England. I know we didn't all come from England, but the first the first American settlers were from England. They they settled They settled in an area in the Northeast and in that area there were already people living there, right? There were lots of Native Americans there or American Indians uh, Some of the tribes that were already in place there were the Wampanoag the Mohawk, the Oneida, the Onondaga, lots of lots of funny names that are hard to say. Um, Mohawk, I think I already said that one. But so at first, at first, relations were okay. okay? People, the, the settlers, the English settlers and the, the Native Americans there would trade. They would, they taught us some skills, how to survive. At first things were okay, but as more and more settlers started to show up and take up more land, it became a problem. So that was when tension started and there was some fighting things. Things were not going so well anymore. At, at one point, a group of the Native Americans got together, five tribes, the Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, and the Seneca tribes got together and formed what is called the Iroquois Nation. And they, or the Iroquois Confederacy, sorry, the Iroquois Confederacy was actually able to hold off settlers for, for several years. But it, settlers didn't stop coming. So settlers are coming and coming and coming. And eventually they established the original 13 colonies, which were all on the East Coast, mostly in that northeast region okay and you know some of them were given the land from the king of england some of them came for religious freedom others were here just for purely economic regions from and and they came from you know some of them were dutch some of them were english some of them were quakers there there were lots of different groups of people settling in these 13 colonies and so as more people come, the United States, they weren't the United States then, but the colonies, the colonies started to want their own, they, want, they started to want control over what was happening in this country that they were settling. And Britain was actually still the owner, you know, England, the British were actually still the owners of these colonies and while the settlers would do a lot of things on their own they would vote and settle a lot of their own issues they would still have these laws that the english would pass that would affect them that they didn't always like and so that became a big problem they, the settlers wanted they wanted to be able to participate in this English government that was passing laws that affected them. Okay, so that was how the American Revolution started, was the English were passing laws that were affecting American settlers who were really still English people, right? They were still part of the English colony. They didn't like that. They didn't like that some government that they had no part in was making rules for them and so they decided well we're going to become our own country we're not going to be part of england anymore and that didn't go so well with england so england did not want to let go we did not want to stay and we had a war so the first the very first fights started in well in, in the 13 colonies but it, the first fight was in lexington Okay, and there was also something called the Boston Massacre very early on. So this this was when the British sent soldiers to Boston to keep order. So we probably heard of the Boston Tea Party. This was when some people in Boston threw a bunch of tea into the ocean. And the reason that they did that was because they didn't like the taxes that they were having to pay on it. 
So rather than paying the taxes, so these are those laws that I was just talking about that the people didn't like, okay, they just threw it in the ocean. And so then England lost a lot of money because uh, this tea is worth a lot of money and it's now in the ocean. Okay, so, so Boston sends soldiers, not Boston, England sends soldiers to Boston to get things under control. A fight breaks out, a few people die. That's the Boston Massacre. Okay, and one of the people who died, his name was Crispus Attucks. He's kind of a, an important American figure. Okay, so fighting breaks out. Fighting breaks out, and about a year into the fighting, about a year into the colonies fighting for independence from England, we write this thing called the Declaration of Independence. And the Declaration of Independence was just us saying, we are not part of England. We are our own country, okay? We are free, we are independent from England. And then, you know, after a little bit more time passes, we eventually win that war with England, we become our own country, and we have to form a government. So that was when all of those founding fathers like Samuel Adams, George Washington, Benjamin Franklin got together and wrote a constitution. So, so we get our independence from England through the American Revolution. We win this war against them. We now are our own country. We are independent of them, and we are setting up our own government. And we set as our first president, George Washington, because he was a general in the army who had won this war against England. He was very well liked, very well respected. So we made him our first president. And one thing that it says in that chapter I thought was kind of interesting was that when he was, when he became president, the capital of the United States was in New York City. I didn't know that. So it, the very first capital was New York City. It later moved to Philadelphia in 1790, and then it didn't become Washington, D.C. until 1800. So we've had at least three different capitals. And when George Washington was sworn in, it was in New York City. It wasn't even in Washington, D.C. Okay, so we've got a new country, a new government, and our, our government is built on this idea of everyone being equal and having these rights. And at the same time, we have some examples of us not following this, this idea within our own country. So one thing that we had going on was slavery. So while we are saying, you know, with our constitution that, that all men are created equal, okay, well, we're saying that, we're also saying, but we have slaves. So, so that was a problem. And in the Northeast, you start to see what we called abolitionists. And the abolitionist movement was a group of people who was led by folks like William Lloyd Garrison, and they wanted to end slavery. And a lot of the colonies becoming states, right? I guess that would be later. But a lot of these Northeast colonies were the first to get rid of slavery, okay? So they were outlawing slavery. That's, that's spreading across, across the nation, this desire to stop, stop slavery because it doesn't agree with our concept of all men being created equal and having equal rights. And then at the same, well, after that, really, okay, after abolition, we also have women's rights. So again, all men created equal, but we don't let women vote. So another movement that got started on the East Coast and moved throughout the country was the women's rights movement. And that movement was led by people like Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. And one of the first things that they, that they wanted to establish is called women's suffrage or the right to vote. So believe it or not, back in those days, in the early American days, women were not even allowed to vote. So, so these are some of the changes that have happened since we first started our, our government and our new country 
on the East Coast. And that, that is the history of the Northeast and early America in a nutshell.